Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. Uh, today we are sitting on top of a friggin' mountain. Uh, this is out in the Ocotillo Wells off-road park. What we're gonna do is for all of you Humvee and Hummer owners, uh, new Hummer owners or Humvee owners who have, or even haven't off-roaded your truck yet, so we're gonna do kind of a crash course on off-roading your truck. Hopefully give you some basic knowledge of the truck, how it operates, and uh, get you out here on the trail so you can really enjoy the truck. So it doesn't have to be a street queen. So first, let's go and do a walk around around the truck and talk about the H1. Humvee is very similar, so we're gonna apply that to this uh, this vlog. However, there's a couple of, uh, systems that you don't have. Primarily, you don't have central tire inflation system. But we're just gonna talk about some of the systems on the outside of the truck. Then we'll talk about the systems on the inside of the truck, and then we'll apply those. All right, so first and foremost, you've got CTIS, central tire inflation system. Know how this system operates. The fronts are separated from the rear, and you can also uh, select both front and rear, inflate and deflate on the fly. Most importantly about CTIS is know what type of rims and tires you have, as well as, I shouldn't say tires, but uh, what type of rims you have, and specifically if you have run flats. If you have run flats, that's a game changer. It's really gonna help out on uh, low pressure uh, levels which um, in my opinion, anywhere below about 12 PSI is gonna be where you have to have run flats. Um, 15 is ideal. Um, and, and honestly, I've, I've never gotten into a situation where I've needed to go below 15. At 15, I'll drop it down to 15 without having run flats operate it for a little while, then I'll inflate it back up, get it up to like 20. So right now I'm running this thing at 20 PSI and I made this entire hill climb no problem at all with 20 PSI. So that's the first thing. Second one is um, ideally, hopefully you have rocker panel protection. That's really important. It gives you a lot of rigidity to the bottom of the truck. You can crawl across rocks, slide across it, no problem. Also undercarriage protection, which is the cage that goes underneath the truck. Ideally you have that. If not, just be aware of what you're going over. Don't get high centered on anything. If you have a big rock, you get high centered on and rip out your whole transmission, um, do a lot of damage. So if you don't have undercarriage, don't go on some of the really crazy stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look on the inside of the truck. So we're inside the truck, H1 Hummer. Obviously Humvee's a little different. You don't have CTIS, but um, shifter's a little bit different, but it still has uh, more or less the same transfer case. We'll get into that in a sec. So I'm running right around 20 to 22 PSI on the gauge. Uh, both of them are up the same. That's my go-to pressure for pretty much all off-roading. Unless I'm doing higher speed driving, then I'm gonna be a minimum of like 25 PSI. So uh, you can adjust accordingly. You get into some rock crawling, you wanna dro uh, drop it down a little bit more, or you're primarily where you need a, a bigger, wider footprint. And that's really what dropping that air pressure does, is it flattens out that tire, gives you a lot more grip off-road. So that's what you wanna do when you're losing traction. Okay, so we got our gauge right here. You've got green that indicates front, orange needle indicates the rear. So you've got a two needle gauge, and then obviously the, the pressure on the outside at PSI. And then coming over here, this is your selector. You're gonna select the front at the top. You're gonna select both in the center or rear, selecting it down. Now, on some of the older model trucks, the gauge is actually down below. Uh, it's down by your knee and you select the same, more or less the same setting that way, mechanically turning the knob. Then coming up here, this is your pump. This is your CTIS pump, inflates, so pressure's starting to come up. And then of course, deflate here. And this is a um, tricky one because you have to hold the deflate button down. Um, the nuances to this is you can hit the inflate button and it's gonna happen to you. You're gonna be driving down the road and all of a sudden you hear this pop, 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 pop. That's the actual pressure uh, blow off valve uh, blowing off. And I wanna say it's 50 PSI if it's uh, working properly. And that's what, what's happened is you just forgot to keep uh, turn your inflate button off. So that's pretty easy to turn it off and then deflate it back down. So that's how CTIS works. So the next thing you gotta understand is how your four wheel drive system works. You've got pretty much three different uh, systems out there. Uh, one is the BTM, brake throttle modulation. That's equipped on all Humvees and uh, all H1 Hummers up until I think it was 99 or so. 98, something like that, they went to the TT4 system. Uh, BTM, the way you operate the lockers is actually brake throttle modulation. Really simple way to do it is 
uh, you're off-roading, you come up to an obstacle, you need to have full traction, lock up front and rear lockers, you apply 100% brake pressure. I mean, mash that thing down, bring up the RPM up to 1700 RPM. At 1700 RPM, that's your 100% torque output. I think it's like 1750 or something, but usually around 1700 RPM. And then you just adjust your speed based on your brake. So you let off the brake, keeping that torque or that RPM at about 1700, which is giving you full torque. That truck will lock up and walk right up and over the obstacle. And once you get over it, you apply your full brake pressure, bring the RPMs back down and go on your way. Now, TT4 or Torque Track 4 came out as ABS system. Uh, it's a computer system that monitors wheel slippage. So uh, a little less control, however, it's a lot easier to operate, but you have to be careful. Its weakest point is when you're off-roading and uh, you come up to an obstacle and you just throttle into it. You do that and it locks up, it's gonna break a half shaft like that. So be really careful with that. So when you're coming up and over, just, just gingerly apply the, uh, the throttle. It'll sense wheel slippage. You'll hear the truck kind of grab and it's, it's starting to lose traction. It'll lock up on you and go doo -doo -doo, and just, uh, just pull you right up and over that obstacle. Um, the other systems that are out there are like the Eaton E-Locker or the Auburn Lockers that are out there. Um, those are probably the easiest as well as ARB air lockers. Uh, you literally just push a button and it locks up the rear and then you push the other button for the front, it locks up the front. Uh, the way they should be wired up is rear first and then the front. So you'll lock up the rear, most of the time that'll get you up and over the obstacle. Then, uh, but if you're not, you can apply the front locker. Um, that's probably the best system out there because you can have full control and you can lock up just the rears uh, or everything. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility with them. So understand what type of uh, locker system you have. Um, again, uh, you got BTM, TT4, or some type of aftermarket Eaton E-Locker, Auburn Locker, or an ARB Air Locker. Uh, Detroit Lockers are complete junk. Stay away from those. They're very dangerous in an H1 Hummer. because You'll come around a corner on highway speeds and it'll start to lock up. The truck will want to swap in. So if for some reason you think you have one in there, uh, take a look at it and maybe pull that thing out and get it replaced. So that's the locker system on how to off-road the vehicle. Now the next thing we're gonna look at is the uh, shifter, the transfer case. So I've got the e-brake set. I'm in neutral already and I'm in high. So high is gonna be your um, highway driving, really hard packed stuff. Um, you can really do a lot of off-roading just in high. Uh, you don't have to go into HL or high lock. Uh, but it, this purpose, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're on top of a mountain here, so we're, I'm gonna go into low. But um, the same setting, you actually, uh, I'll show you how we drop it into low or high lock. So again, we're in high, grab a hold, and firmly pull it back, just like that. So we're back there into low, and then put it in a drive, or if you're already at an obstacle, run it in first gear, crawl up and over it. Uh, a lot of times, I don't wanna shift in and out of uh, lock to high or high lock. I'll just keep it in lock and I'll bump it up to overdrive and uh, just go up to the next obstacle. Now you are gonna be limited on speed because you are in a very low gear that gives you a lot more torque in that low range. So when that happens, um, just go slower. If, it, if it's a fair run over to the next one, then I guess you'd probably wanna put it up into high lock. So. Uh, that's how the transfer case works. Now let's go ahead and get going. Appreciate you guys watching. 
had a lot of fun out here today at uh, the Three Sisters out in Ocotillo Wells. And uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And thanks for watching. We'll have some more off-road footage coming soon.